Today we're going to talk about Tanner Leatherstein and his Hermes journey cut really short. <laughs> Let me take my Hermes crop for this because it was cut short because, well, they didn't want to sell him the Evelyn bag. Oh, Tanner, Tanner, can you come in, Tanner? Come, come in. Don't be shy. Hi, hi, Tanner. So as you guys know, uh, Tanner Leatherstein has a very successful TikTok account uh, and uh, Instagram account. I mean, he owns uh, a company. I'll post all the links down below. Go, go follow the gentleman. And uh, he does leather goods. He sells leather goods, but um, he also, I guess, the fame and fortune on social media was garnered not through the sales of his products, but rather through... Uh, dissecting luxury bags and non-luxury bags, semi-luxury bags, and kind of showing to the audiences what the quality is. Is it worth the money? Is it not worth the money? So uh, I, I can tell you this much. Uh, when Tanner cut out, um, cut up uh, in pieces um, a Chanel wallet, Y'all have been bombarding me with that video for months. Uh, still to this day, sometimes people send me, Jacob, have you seen Tanner cutting up a Chanel wallet? Like, yes, I have seen Tanner cutting up a Chanel wallet thousands of times. Fabulous. Uh, and I love that he says that it ain't worth it. It's not worth the money. We know it's not worth the money. Luxury is not worth the money. But this is, we've all had these conversations already, but this is something else. This video is going to be aimed at an interesting topic, and that would be Tanner is now going to dissect an Evelyn, a Louis Vuitton, uh, a Louis Vuitton, <laughs> an Hermes Evelyn bag. Uh, he teased us with a short post on Insta and I think also on TikTok saying like, coming soon, we're going to see if the Evelyn Hermes bag is worth the money. And he kind of, you know, the editing has changed. He has a lot of following now, so there's more budget. So he's, you know, like with a hammer, kind of about to hammer uh, the bag and then cut. It's like very dynamic and it's very face, fast, 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 fast paced cut. But, and he's promising us all the tea on the Evelyn bag. Really curious to see. But he tells us at the beginning of this tease video that he tried to reach out to Hermes for an Evelyn bag and on the phone. Girl, that's you know that's not how it works with Hermes, unless you're not really famous. Okay. So anyway, so Hermes says, oh, no, 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 no. We do not uh, tell you how much it costs. We don't tell you what we sell. If we sell, we don't have. Oh, oh, mon Dieu, how dare you call us on the telephone? So anyway, he's like, oh, okay. Tanner, here's a tip. Hermes does put online Evelyn bags for sale almost every day. You just got to catch the right time when they do so. And then you could order it online, an authentic Evelyn bag from Hermes. However, you got to be really quick because the alleged bots buy them up before you get even a chance to click place into cart and then purchase. If you know, you know, us Hermes people know, right? And I mean... <laughs> the the frisbee of shame. We've all been there trying to snatch up something. I actually managed to get a Pegas uh, once off the website. Really cool. In mauve sylvestre, which, you know, it's a gorgeous color. Great little pink. But anyway, so he decides, well, then, okay, if Hermes is not going to sell me the Evelyn, let me go on the real, real to get an Evelyn bag. And I'm already like, girl... The real real, you know that like a lot of the stuff on the real real is fake. Allegedly, everything I say in this video, by the way, is for entertainment purposes only. Just my opinion, not rooted in any truths or facts. Everything's alleged. While you're at it, subscribe to my channel. Push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today and gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I have my co-chatters here to the side uh, with me. Uh, <laughs> Caleb, the real, real, really, girl, I live stream every Saturday. Join me in the live chats. Yes, I know. He got it on the real, real. Now, the short video is um, very fascinating, but it's it's kind of tricky because he does do this thing 
where he says at a certain point that the bag that was purchased from the real real is in Togo leather. All right. And it was it's a small Evelyn, tiny one. Now, we know that the Evelyn is made in Clemence leather, not in Togo leather. Somebody that is allegedly really busy with leathers and knows their leather and is holding the Evelyn in their hand, you would think they would know the difference between Togo and Clemence? Or that they would at least do their research on the Evelyn bag before they start throwing shade at the Evelyn bag and that they would realize that the Evelyn bags, as of now, are sold in Clemence, not in Togo. But he didn't do that research. So now, um, of course, the viewers who are into leather and into Hermes and into bags realized the mistake really quickly. And in fact, underneath that particular video on Instagram, there is a plethora of comments that flew in saying, mm, it's Togo, not Clemence. And you got it from the real real. It's probably fake. The bag looks fake. The bag look, looks fake. A lot of people started saying that. So Tanner or somebody for him addressed the situation and answered to a couple of these uh, uh, comments saying, oh, well, it was sold to me by the real real as Togo. So I just assumed it was Togo. Really? Is this an excuse? Or was the bag really listed as Togo? Because then people said, well, if the real real listed it as Togo, then you know it's fake. <laughs> So they're saying like, yeah, we don't really believe you if you dissect this bag because it might be a fake because you got it from the real real. So girl, and then they started giving him tips in the comments under the video, like try the Hermes website from this to this time every day. That's when they kind of might upload an Evelyn, um, a real Evelyn, <laughs> so that you could buy that one. And at least, you know, you got an authentic one if you if you want to dissect it, because girl, the bag you're lifting in your video looks fake, blah, blah, blah. He then commented back to that in his comment section saying, oh, I have a friend or a few friends that are really good at authenticating this stuff. And they have told me that the bag is authentic. Really? Should we just take your word for it? Because yeah, I'm a little bit skeptical here. There's a lot of things that are not matching up. <laughs> There's a lot of things that are not matching up. But the most interesting thing, so basically, we got a bag from the real real that uh, allegedly, as uh, according to, uh, to Tanner's comments under his video, was listed as Togo. He's holding it in his hand and doesn't realize that it's not Togo. Yes, Togo is similar to Clemence from a distance. But an expert, I, should know the difference between Togo and Clemence once they have it in their hands. Wouldn't they know the difference? The veining of the Togo leather is not really there uh, in Clemence. And, you know, it's it's the, the little pores, the texture is different. I mean, I get it. Tanner is not versed in Hermes leather, so maybe he doesn't know all these variations as much as Hermes fanatics. By the way, this is goat, darling. This is a goat leather that Hermes uh, does their crops with. The handle too, but we digress. We digress. So people are saying, you got it from the real real, already red flag. If the real real, as you state, listed it as Togo and not Clemence, triple red flag, you not realizing that it's a Clemence and not Togo, what does that say about your professionality? And then you're kind of saying your friends authenticated the bag. Who are your friends? Like, we should just take your word for it at this point. I don't take anybody's word for anything, honey. It's just like in those videos where doctors or where non-doctors uh, just put a white robe in a video and they put a stethoscope around their neck so that you would think that they have authority in the field of medicine. You know, you could put on any outfit. Now, benefit of the doubt, benefit of the doubt, he does have a leather workshop, right? He does sell. I've been on the website. I've seen the bags. I've seen the wallets. They look sturdy, but I haven't touched one. Uh, it hasn't gone through my hands, so I don't know how, you know, I don't know what the quality is ultimately. But 
I got a little receipt here. Uh, I stumbled upon uh, one of the comments underneath that particular video that Tanner Leatherstein did on his reels and TikTok announcing the upcoming analysis of the Evelyn Hermes bag. So somebody says, uh, and this is kind of fascinating. Where do we begin? So somebody says to Tanner, you know, there's a way you could be making millions. You obviously have the materials and requisite knowledge. And somebody else commented, yep, I get what you're trying to say. So what they're trying to say is start making replicas, honey. Then somebody else adds to that and says, I doubt he can replicate the stuff Hermes makes. No offense, but Tanner doesn't seem to have the skills needed to make a refined luxury product. Now, here comes the shade. <laughs> um, and then somebody says, that's so funny. He's got an entire staff who are making products. You've bought into the marketing promo materials and sales associate spiels about craftspeople. They are craftspeople with outstanding skills, but they're also trained. And anyone with dexterity and commitment can be trained. There's nothing genetic. Uh, L.L. Bean boots are handmade on 120 years old special leather sewing machines with certain finishing by hand. You don't really think Chanel and Dior are quilting products by hand? Chanel is not quilting products by hand. They are even photographing machines doing, like Chanel is not hiding the fact that the quilting is happening with machines. They actually post those photos uh, openly. Chanel is not hiding it. But anyway, um, somebody then says, answers to that, sorry, I don't get the point you're trying to make. Here, here's where it gets juicy. Obviously, people are trained, but who's going to train them? Who will train Tanner? I don't even like Hermes, but I let you in on a secret. This is all alleged, huh? But I'm just reading. Don't shoot the messenger, y'all. I'm trying to work on my likability. <laughs> it's not working in my favor, but I'm trying. Okay. I don't even like Hermes, but I'll let you in on a secret. Tanner doesn't make anything. All his stuff is from Turkey, made from leather that isn't of super high quality. Then it's drop shipped. Why do you think he pushes the whole imperfect leather good argument? It's marketing. Looks like you've bought into it. When he says, it would cost me $60 in materials and labor to produce this in my workshop, now you see why. No workshop in the U.S. matching the quality of these brands is going to replicate that at his cost estimates. Of course, a bag from Amazon produced in Pakistan made from pea tanned cowhide is going to be $60. Yet you have this guy calling it high quality because of natural imperfections in the grain and advocating for you to buy it. I know other leather craftsmen. It's a really long comment. I'm just trying to. I know other le uh, leather craftsmen who've been at it for decades and can't do a proper saddle stitch. I simply don't believe Tanner or his workers will replicate an Hermes bag anytime soon. With lots of training and commitment, maybe down the road, but not now. His whole internet presence is a marketing gimmick to grow his brand. I mean, look at his name Tanner Leatherstein or Leatherstein. It's smart, but his goods aren't anything special or refined. He's just a smart businessman finding a passion for leather. Check out, and then they drop some other name. I'm not going to promote them. Anyway, check out then this other brand. Same principle. Drop shipped bags that aren't as high quality as you may think. They just have genius marketing and use overpriced brands as leverage. Use overpriced brands as leverage. That kind of resonated with me because isn't that why all of us luxury lovers and luxury bag lovers flocked to him? Because he started talking about luxury brands, right? And we all came there and then he's telling us Look, they're charging you too much for this. Buy mine. It's much cheaper. 
I mean, it's genius. It's genius. They just have genius marketing and use overpriced brands as leverage. At the end of the day, just buy from independent craftsmen if you want top quality and attention to detail. And then this comment got a ton of applause. And then somebody says, no one on this thread is going to listen to you because he is marketing at people who are already angry at the overpriced luxury bag. He's telling them exactly what they would like to hear. Supermarketing. Applause, applause, applause. I'm just reading the comments here. This is not necessarily my opinion. I'm just, don't shoot the messenger, all right, you guys? Um, none of this is a fact. None of this is a fact. Everything's alleged. I'm just reading comments that are left under his video. He is telling them exactly what they would like to hear. Supermarketing. Applause, applause. The brands won't entertain him because they know this. The people on such threads are not their target market in any case. So, I repeat, I'm just reading comments that other people wrote, so obviously this is not my opinion. But very fascinating. Um, two points in particular. One, using high-end brands as leverage to call on to your own shop. Two, counting on the fact that a lot of people are angry at the overpriced prices that they cannot afford of these luxury brands. And when I read that comment, I thought to myself, is it really true? Are we at that point where a lot of people are really that angry and frustrated? Well, let me dive deeper. So I started scrolling through the comment section under that particular video, and lo and behold, one after the other, angry, angry, angry comments of people saying that they don't like the prices, they, they don't like Hermes anyway, good, you know, bring them down, tear them down, you know, bring them all down. You know, there's a lot of this kind of like mass hysteria, like a mob mentality type of attitude where people are like joining forces to say, tear them to shreds, you tell them, you show them, Tanner. Very, very fascinating mob mentality building here. Now, um, in terms of uh, how Tanner goes about talking about, you know, like this commenter also said, well, uh, the, you know, it doesn't cost that much to do this leather. The leather is going to cost you this much. Labor is going to be like this much. You know, other luxury YouTubers have commented on this, one of them being Jesse Style. Hi, Jesse, by the way. Shout out to Jesse. Go subscribe to her channel. She's awesome. She made a really interesting video about this saying, you guys, don't forget, she also talked about Tanner in her on her channel, and she said, don't forget, you guys, that a lot of these brands also charge these prices for several reasons, one of them being that they've been working for decades and decades and decades to build up their reputation. Do you know how many millions and billions they had to invest into building up that reputation? That's a lot of money. That's a big investment to make. It has to pay off sometime. Of course, they're all earning a lot of money, and it did pay off in the end, for sure. And then some, not, not negating that, but these high-end luxury brands have hyper-luxurious stores. Those don't come cheap. They do, they do changes in their merchandise, their windows, almost on a weekly basis. They put entire installations in their windows, incredibly elaborate, intrinsicate installations in their windows, in their boutiques, in their shops, that costs a lot of money. They don't own all those buildings. They rent also in the most luxurious parts of town. That costs a lot of money. They advertise in the most expensive magazines in the world and on television and on YouTube and other social media platforms. That costs a lot of money. So you see, when we pay for uh, an Hermes bag, sure, we are paying a relatively low amount of that price for the actual craftsmanship that went into that bag. Most of the money we are paying for is marketing, advertising, merchandising. The fact that the brand has been investing billions in renting places redoing windows, photographing, ad campaigns, installations, 
exhibitions. So that's what we're paying for. And Tanner never mentioned this in, in his videos. Not that I know of, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is something the higher end the brand is. Take it from someone who I'm not wearing any particular outfit, like a doctor or like a leather cobbler. I'm just wearing denim, y'all. I'm just wearing your blue collar outfit, but take it from someone who has been working in the fashion industry for a long time, in the marketing field, in the PR field, in the creative field, also in the sales field. The higher end the brand is, and the more it costs them to sustain an image. So when you're paying a lot of money for an Evelyn bag that a lot of people are throwing shade at under in the comment section under Tanner's video, and they say, this is such a simple bag. It's so easy to make. I can make it. My grandma can make it. You're not just paying for that leather and for the craftsmanship. You're paying for decades and decades, depending how old the brand is, sometimes centuries of marketing that went into building up the credibility of the brand, the desirability of the brand. And also certain styles just never go out of style. They're not just fashion. In order to obtain that status with a product means that not only is marketing enough to brainwash people to believe that that product is genuinely that good, but you really also have to have a solid product because sooner or later, people are going to be bored of something if it's not working for them. And certain products just work. Why? Because a lot of thought went into them. Because certain brands really did invest a lot of time trying to develop the design for a product to really fit a lifestyle. To really fit a lifestyle. That's, there's no, you know, surprise that certain bags are copied so much. And I'm not talking about replicas that try to put the logo on the bag. Is No, no, no. I'm talking about just inspired by the shape of, you know what I mean? The dupes that are legal because a lot of these brands do not put a copyright on a shape because it's, it would just be impossible to copyright that. So the trapezoid shape of a bag, which is the typical shape of a Kelly and a Birkin as well, it's not copywritten. Anybody can do a trapezoid bag. So you could, it's easy to make it look like a Kelly and still be legally allowed to sell it. You just, you can't call it a Kelly. You can't put the Hermes logo on it. And they also sell because it's a practical bag. Because a brand like Hermes put a lot of time designing a bag that really works for day-to-day -day needs. There's a lot to be said about that. Nowadays, a lot of brands don't invest the time anymore and the money in creating a product that really suits our modern needs. I applaud the brands that manage to do it, that really invest the money, big money and time to deliver a flawless product that really, really matches your needs. Most of them don't because now they have to do 10 collections a year. There's no time to think about that stuff, right? So that's why I think one of the reasons, not just the recession, but another big reason why we are receding back to this quiet luxury is because we're so tired of these semi-thought-through seasonal products that are super crappy. They're not thought through very well. They fall apart easily because they're not constructed to last. They might be nice for photogenic for a photo shoot. Instagram, yay, great. Let the influencers eat cake, darling. But then what? The actual real consumer is left with a product that is really subpar because it wasn't thought through. So we're dumb once, we're dumb twice, but you know, at, after a certain point, we also realize, well, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Let me, let me just buy what I know works. And all of us, well, a lot of us are going back to the heritage pieces of the brands, the stuff we know works, the stuff we know has been around for a long time. And we stick to them and ultimately spend a premium price for them because we also know there's a guarantee of time that comes with these products. And especially when it comes to Hermes, because, you know, at Hermes, they always say, luxury is something that you can always repair. This is something that Hermes always tells you. It's a beautiful thing to think about taking your Kelly back to the Hermes spa 20 years after you bought it, and they're still going to touch it up and fix it for you. Because they say luxury, true luxury is something you can repair, right? And this is something that I would wish 
this gentleman would also kind of bring into the conversation when he talks about these brands and when he judges them and when he dissects them. Anyway, <clears throat> my apologies if I wasn't uh, likable enough. It, it just, it is what it is, you guys. Uh, Jacob spoke with insights, says Almo Pradana, articulation and responsibilities like someone who has 5 million subscribers should respect. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very kind of you. Thank you for the comment. Um, so I'm just saying it all comes at a cost. I'm trying to see what other comments we got here. Uh, oh, really? I don't know. Caleb says that. And didn't he wear actual sneakers in a tannery video with blood and mess all over the floor? I have not seen that. Caleb says, yeah, he did in, uh, did a video in a tannery with a guy dressed appropriately, and he was in his Nikes. <laughs> well, okay. I didn't see that video, but thanks for letting me know. I'm going to try to check it out. If you send me a link for that to that video and uh, Caleb and... The, and uh, um, and uh, send me a message if you if you can. Uh, right, that's when I figured it all out. Says Caleb. Ah, gotcha. <clears throat> Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I just to be very clear, you guys. I, I'm not throwing shade at Tanner. I wish him all the success in this world and all the money in this world. I just want to start an honest conversation where we can be transparent about the practices that are going on here. Like, what is the end goal? Like, is Tanner trying to show us the lacking of certain aspects of luxury products so that we start buying his products? Or is he just really fighting for the consumer? You know, because he does like to portray himself as a family guy, right? His Instagram, his profile picture is a sunset with the family, the kid, the wife, or... Uh, partner you know it, it's it's all so perfectly constructed to feel like you trust the, him almost too perfect and you know so that's it uh diane says he's only talking about the quality nothing else I like him. I feel sad when people badmouth him. I'm not badmouthing him, Diane. You guys, our society is forgetting to utilize critical thinking. Please do not let brands brainwash you into passivity. Critical thinking is vital if we as consumers are to survive in this very aggressive marketing driven world what does marketing do it finds your weakness it exploits it to the benefit of the brand that is selling the product to you no matter what the brand thank you guys so much for watching food for thought let me know your comments down below thank you uh subscribe